In the previous lecture, we went over the theory and use of several new functions. In this demonstration, we'll be putting a portion of that knowledge to use by building an interactive sketch together. I'll be focusing on a project that is heavily rooted in mouse input, demonstrating how a sketch can be a starting point for artistic creation. And the actual creation begins after pressing run. Let's launch processing and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here we are in processing, and in this lecture, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own sample interactive project from scratch. Now this project is heavily based on the input from your mouse. And the project that I'm gonna be creating is based on a project from the textbook Generative Design, published in 2012, and this is from exercise P11101. Now, this is one of my highest recommended textbooks for working with processing. It's called Generative Design, and it can be found by visiting generative-gestaltung.de slash code. From here, there are several code packages available, both for processing and VVVV. Now, if you'd like to explore these code packages, I recommend downloading Code Package for Processing 2.x, and I highly, highly recommend owning a copy of the Generative Design book. So, let's get back to work here. So the first thing I'm going to do is declare a few global variables. I know that I'm going to be working with a for statement, which is going to be counting up steps. So I'm going to create two step counting variables from integers. And those integers are going to be step x to count the steps along the x axis and step y to count the steps along the y axis. And that'll make a little bit more sense when I plug these into the for loop in my draw statement. So that's all we're going to use for our global variables. Next, we're going to set up our setup function. So I'm going to type void setup. It's going to take no arguments, place my curly brackets inside, and I'm simply going to set up the size of our canvas to be 800 by 600 pixels. And for the background, I'm just going to type zero. And what that's going to do is it's going to set our background to be black. Okay, that's fine because actually the background won't be visible when we're all done with this sketch. Okay, that's all we're going to do for the setup code. Simple so far. Next, we're going to set up our draw code block. So I'll type void because it returns nothing. Draw takes no arguments. And set up our curly brackets. Open and close. So one of the first things that I want to do is change the color mode. Now, in the last video, I showed you how to work with the HSB color mode. And we're going to work with that color mode again. So I'm going to type color mode, making sure I use my camel casing there. And I'm going to type HSB for hue, saturation, brightness. And I want to set the limits as the width of the screen, the height of the screen, and 100. And then next what I want to do is I want the mouse to control the steps. So if you recall, I made the step X and step Y variables. Let's go ahead and fill those variables in here. So here I'm going to say for our mouse input, I will define step x to be mouse x. And then step y is going to be mouse y. And let me just clean up this code here so it's all aligned. Go. So this is going to define the step size. And one thing that I'd like to do is I would like to add a little bit to the step size. So as we move along the x-axis and move along the y-axis, I wanna add the space in between the boxes that we're going to be drawing for this. So I'm gonna add a spacing of 20 and 20. So each time we move the mouse, it's gonna take that value and add a value of 20 to it. Okay. Now we'll take a short break to see how things are going with a brief quiz. Okay, so next we're going to write our for statement. And this is going to be the most powerful statement that we write because it's going to basically control all of the drawing in our project. So this is going to be our for statement. And let me explain a little bit about this for statement. So basically what we want to do is we want to create a grid out of our canvas. And we're going to call that grid 
grid X and grid Y for the two different values. So there will be grid Y and grid X. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that as long as the grid is less than the height and width of the screen, you should iterate through the steps. And those are step X and step Y based off the mouse. So that says basically as long as our mouse is on the screen, you're going to do some redrawing of boxes on the screen uh, based off of the location of the mouse and how it's being iterated through with the four functions. So enough talk about that. Let me show you how it works. So if you recall in the four functions, first you type four, then you type in the declaration of how you're going to be using the function inside the for statement. So I'm going to declare a new variable. It's going to be an integer. And as I mentioned, it's going to be called grid Y. And I'm going to set the initial value to zero. And then the condition or the statement that it's going to test is, is grid Y less than the height of the screen? And if it is, you're just going to add a sign. That is to iterate through and increase the value by none other than step Y. So this is going to consult the input from step Y, which if you recall is the input from the mouse. So I will go ahead and open a curly statement do a few returns and close that statement. And now we're going to write an almost identical for statement inside here for grid X. So I'm going to do the same thing. So for integer declare grid X, give it an initial value of zero. Then the condition to test is, is grid X less than the width of the screen? And if it is, you're going to iterate through grid X, add a sign step X close and now these are the curly brackets that our code is going to go into. So we're going to do two things. We're going to draw a rectangle and we're going to change the fill of that rectangle and we're going to do that throughout the whole screen. So first is the rectangle code. So for the rectangle we're going to choose the rectangle to be drawn based off of the location of grid X, the location of grid Y, and then we will change the size based off of step X and step Y. So there are only four variables, two global, two local variables, and we're using those to be completely decided upon how our rectangle is drawn. And not only are we going to change that, but we're going to change how the fill works as well. So I'm going to say that the fill is based off of the HSB color values. And we're going to grab those color values for grid X. And then we're going to do height minus grid Y. And then we're going to do 100 for the third value. Okay, so up to this point, what we've done is we've declared two global variables. We've set up our canvas to be 800 by 600. We've changed the color mode to HSB. We stored our mouse plus 20 in two new local variables, or two global variables actually. And then we wrote a nested for statement that's checking two new variables, grid X and grid Y, seeing if they're less than the height, and then add assigning them based off the location of the mouse. Then we use all those values to select the color and the rectangle size. So now if I run this, let's take a look at what we have here. Ah, so this should be a semicolon. Here we go. Let's run that, fix that error. Okay, so here we are. So here's how it works. Basically, it's redrawing these grid and selecting the colors and moving those color values and iterating them through. So if I'm in the lower right hand corner, we're going to be at almost full value. And what that means is it's only going to be drawing one rectangle at the maximum width and height. But as I move my mouse closer to the upper left, I'm lowering the value and increasing the amount of rectangles that can appear on the screen. And you'll see that as you move, those colors are changing based off of the location of grid X, grid Y. So this is a really amazing piece. There are a lot of options that you can do with this piece. For instance, I could change this from a rect to an ellipse. You'll see it, this is an interesting view here. It's going to be drawing these ellipses on top of each other. 
So this makes for a very different piece, but it is also interesting as well. And then something else that I can do is I could say, for instance, no stroke and take away the stroke on these. Let's go ahead and play with that. So this is a very interesting piece. Now, as I mentioned, this is based off of one of the exercises from the generative Gestaltung text. Now, one of the last things that I want to show you is how to work with the keyboard input. And instead of using the keyboard input to change the drawing, because this one I want it to be heavily based on the mouse input, we're going to use the keyboard to save a screenshot to our data folder. So before I do that, I'm just going to save this sketch to my desktop so that you can see how this works. So select my desktop folder here, save it. Great. So the code that I'm going to write here is going to say void key pressed. And then I'm going to execute the code inside this code block. So it's going to be an if statement and it's going to check to see if the key S is pressed for save screenshot. And you could assign any keyboard uh, button or keyboard input function to do what I'm about to do here, but I'm going to use the letter S. So I'll say key and I'll say double equal sign to make sure that it's testing the qualification if it's equal. And I'll say lowercase s and I'll say and or key equal equal uppercase s. Close that off. And I'm going to right away just say save frame and then give it a name screenshot dot PNG and close that off. So now I'm going to save this, press stop, press run, see if this builds. Okay, it builds successfully. So now if I work with this a bit and just make a interesting pattern here, I just want to do a little bit of motion. All right, I like this. So now if I press S, should save it to our data folder. Let's take a look and make sure that that worked. So then you would open your sketch, take a look, screenshot located right inside. Let's just verify that that's exactly what we had on our canvas. It is, and it's based off of the dimensions that you set up for your canvas. So it's capturing the whole view and the whole pixels. Okay, so this has been an overview of creating your own sample interactive project from scratch. As you can see, this didn't take too long to create, but it uses a little bit of clever coding in the for statements to make something that's highly interactive and could be different every time. We also went over how to change the color mode, reviewed how to work with variables, for statements, and also using the key press to save your screenshot. In the next video, we'll take a look at a different generative Gestaltung interactive project, and we'll build that one from scratch as well, heavily focused on the keyboard input.